Hi, everyone. All right, speech time. Lenny Kravitz. I've had the pleasure of knowing you for a long time. And I must say, being your daughter has been one of the great adventures of my life. Since you were so young when I was born, in many ways, we've grown up together. We've been through a lot. We've seen a lot. I've seen a lot. I've seen you change in the most beautiful ways. I've seen the way you stay the same in the most important ways. I've seen the way you show up and take care of the people you love. I've seen your incredible dedication to your art. But mostly, I've seen through your shirts. <laughs> According to my dad, if it doesn't expose your nipples, it's not a shirt. And sure, it used to embarrass me when you'd pick me up from school as a kid, but I gotta say at this point, I respect it. You really do pull it off. Your relationship with the netted shirt is probably your longest one, and it works. <laughs> you two make each other better, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's a beautiful thing. Now, my whole life, people have always asked me, what's it like to have such a cool dad? And the answer is awesome. It's awesome. But not for the reasons some might think. What's cool about you is not what people think is cool about you. Your radness doesn't come from your shades or leather pants or netted shirts. It comes from your true love of life. Everything you do is an expression of that love. Your music, your lyrics, your live performances, your homes, your love of food, of family, of good conversations, stupid jokes, dance parties, late, late night kitchen talks. You absolutely devour life. You eat up every crumb and lick the plate. Life is your art. And that is why your music is so inspiring and important. You make people feel alive. You remind them of the only thing that matters, love. I know Grandpa Sai and Grandma Roxy are, were already so proud of what they got to watch you do and accomplish. And I know that they are still watching in awe of the man and artist you have become. I know I am. Congratulations, you're a star. time I uh, shake hands like this with Lenny, I always have my eyes open because once he had a ring on, a thumb ring, and we went to shake hands, he busted my thumb open, so I'm always careful. He's more than a friend. He's more than a brother. We're twins. We just don't look alike. We've had a close brothership, friendship for, well, he'd be seven when we met. For 30 years, when he was seven, I met him. God has blessed him with an unbelievable talent, but even more so, an unbelievable heart. He's a giver, a lover. I wrote some stuff down, but I'm just riffing. He's a friend. I wrote down the definition of friend. I looked it up. Webster. A person whom one knows and with whom one has a bond of mutual affection, typically exclusive of sexual relations. Well, <laughs> oh Lord, yes. a companion, a companion. It said a boon companion, a bo as in a boon, boon coon, a bosom friend, a brother, a man or boy in relation to other sons or daughters of his parents. He's a brother of the world. He's just everyone's brother. A male fellow Christian. A brother. An African, an Afro-American form of, ex, of address. And I, I, let me say that again. An African-American form of address, i.e., my brother. 
<laughs> Spell B R U T H A. A fellow human being, one related to another by common ties. We have been tied together for a long time. We're close friends. We are brothers. I love Lenny Kravitz. I love Lenny Kravitz. I love Lenny Kravitz like I've loved no other brother in my life. Less is more. Leonard Albert Kravitz. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you. Thank you all so very much for being here. Thank you to the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce for bestowing upon me this incredible honor. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you, Denzel. Having both of you here, my daughter and my brother, means the world to me. I moved from New York to LA when I was 11. And if Norman Lear never brought my mother out here to do the Jeffersons, I probably wouldn't be standing here right now. But LA was where a naive teenager chose to leave home at 15 and learned through determination and the kindness of strangers that the streets and the people of LA would be my education to music, to creativity, and to life. I will forever be grateful to this city for that. I used to walk these very streets because the action and the grit that I was missing in New York was right here in Hollywood. As a teenager, I spent a lot of time walking up and down Hollywood Boulevard, seeing the names of all my idols. I never dreamt about having a star. I was usually just looking for a place to crash. But I did dream about making the music I wanted and doing my own thing. To see my name, Lenny Kravitz, permanently engraved on the same streets I used to walk is a surreal, indescribable feeling. You know, I still visit my teenage home in Baldwin Hills that overlooks the entire city. And from there, I can see Sunset in Van Ness, where I take the bus to watch my mom film The Jeffersons. The excitement of watching her tape one of the most popular shows in the country was both an early glimpse into show business and an education into the power of Hollywood. I can see the Hollywood Bowl, where I performed my very first concert as a 12-year-old member of the California Boys Choir. My grandma, Bessie, who was terrified of flying, took a plane from New York for the first time in her life just to see me perform. And it gave me an exhilarating taste of how I could express myself through music. I can see Washington and Rimpaw, where I spent hours every day as a teenager cutting, gutting, and frying fish at a place called Leroy's Fish Market. Everyone from the local hustlers to Mayor Tom Bradley ate there. I stank of fish for a year, but the hustle and work ethic I learned there still resonates with me four decades later. I can see the original Guitar Center on Sunset and Vista, where I got my first Les Paul guitar at age 12. I used to live in that store, hanging out, checking out all the guitars and other equipment I could not afford. I can see the old A&M lot on Sunset and La Brea, where I would record my first demo as a cocky young musician named Romeo Blue. <laughs> Y'all that know, know. After each session, I'd secretly sleep on the couch in the lounge. I learned as much as I could about recording and eventually dropped the alter ego to perform under my real name, Lenny Kravitz. I'm eternally grateful for everyone who took the time to be here today. But I'm especially honored to see the people that watched me evolve into an artist. Shannon Brock. Woo! 
You got me stoned for the first time. In that little parking lot, while we were cutting class and introduced me to Led Zeppelin's Black Dog. Forever altering the way I heard and understood music. This star is for you. Phineas Newborn. You quickly became a brother to me when we were in the California Boys Choir. The discipline and hard work we shared in learning the fundamentals of classical music has forever shaped my musical journey and influenced my artistic expression to this day. This star is for you. Trace Devi, my high school bandmate in WAVE, the first group I was ever in. You were right next to me for more than 40 years. God, our first show at the Beverly Hills High Auditorium. Wow. This star is for you. Marla Gibbs. You've known me since I was 11 years old, and you've seen me through all the chapters in my life. I'm so blessed for the love that you've shown me, my mother, and the rest of my family. You get another star. <laughs> Hal Williams. Remember when you helped me memorize lines for a play we did at the Apex Theater on La Brea? Your brilliance as an actor showed me what it takes to be at the top of one's craft. This star is for you, my brother. <laughs> Jeff Aroff, you signed me to Virgin Records when no one else understood or believed in me. This star is for you. <laughs> Steve Smith, who knew me as a kid when he worked in the wardrobe department at the Jeffersons, and later became my very first manager. This star is for you. Lisa Bonet. You were such a major part of me finding myself both as an artist and a human being. This star is for you. All of the people here that kept me company and talked to me through the window while I washed dishes at East West Cafe on Fairfax. As a teenager who was living in a car at the time, those hours you spent with me mean more than you'll ever know. This star is for all of you. There's nothing that keeps me grounded more than seeing the people who have taken the journey with me all these decades. Craig Ross, my longtime guitarist and musical partner. Alex Alvarez, my instrument technician, who's worked with me for more than 30 years. Craig Fruin and Carlene Donovan, my faithful manager and publicist who have guided me for so long on this amazing journey. Rich Feldstein and Jeff Hafer, my accountant and my lawyer, who always have the answers. And everyone at CAA who has helped keep me on the road for so long. For everyone here that has nurtured my dream, this isn't my star, this is our star. Thank you all for this and let love rule.